our very last section of chapter 25, 25.6, the mirror equation and magnification. So for the mirror equation and magnification, uh, we have a few variables to define before we get started. And I've been using some of these already. So little f is our focal length. That is the distance from the mirror itself to the focal point f. And we use a little f for that. So we have that there. That is our focal length. DO is the object distance, the distance from where the object is to the mirror. D sub I is the image distance, so from the mirror to the image itself. And then finally, a lowercase m is our magnification. So those are all useful things to keep in mind. Now, there's ways that you can show how to derive this equation. I'm not too worried about that. The main thing is that we can take this equation and run with it. So this equation is the mirror equation, and it is super useful for anything involving mirrors. It turns out it even applies to lenses. So we're going to see this equation quite a bit. Note that it's one over the object distance plus one over the image distance is equal to one over the focal length, f. This relationship will always hold. So it means if we know two of these variables, like maybe we know the focal length of our mirror and we know the object distance, then we can solve for the image distance. The other equation that we have is the magnification equation. This says, hey, how much magnification does the mirror provide? Is it making your object twice as big, like what you have with a uh, makeup mirror? That's our concave one. Or is it magnifying it to be a smaller size? So what we have here to calculate it is the ratio of the heights. H sub i is the height of the image, and H o is the height of the object. And these should, in your scaled ray diagram, still be something that you could measure, and they should have the right proportionality. Interestingly, you can also calculate the magnification with negative the image distance over the object distance. The negative there tells you that the image, if you get a negative magnification, that tells you that the image is inverted, that it has flipped over. So if you have a positive image distance, positive object distance, you will get a negative magnification. And that's what we have here with our concave mirror. In this case, we had a negative image distance, and so our image is upright. It is not, it's a positive magnification. So that's useful to hang on here. Okay. So let's check out an example, a virtual image formed by a convex mirror. A convex mirror is used to reflect light from an object placed 66 centimeters in front of the mirror. The magnitude of the focal length of the mirror is 46 centimeters. Find the location of the image and the magnification. So this is gonna be one where we actually, it's a convex mirror. So the fact that we have this picture up is really convenient. And this is where having these pictures is useful. So you can jot down our things. The objects placed 66 front centimeters in front of the mirror. So that is my object distance, 66 centimeters. It tells you the focal length magnitude is equal to 46 centimeters. But note it says magnitude. And the key detail there is because it's convex, we need to fill in a negative sign here. I'm gonna put in a different color so it really pops. Anytime you have a convex mirror, it has to have that negative focal length. So you need to fill that in yourself. And we're trying to find the location of the image, which is going to be our D sub I, and also the magnification. So I'm going to turn off sharing for a moment so you can see a little bit better here. There we go. Cool. So we're going to use those two equations that we just got. And the mirror equation and the magnification equation are pretty simple as long as you can keep your sign straight and as long as you can keep the algebra straight. So let's take a look at this and I will focus it down so we have a little more whiteboard to work with. So my mirror equation is one over DO is one over DI is equal to one over the focal length. 
But here we're solving for the image distance, so I'm going to subtract my 1 over do to the other side. So 1 over di is equal to 1 over f minus 1 over do. Okay, this is looking good. So um, this means that my image distance d sub i will be 1 over the focal length minus 1 over do and then inversed at the very end. So you can't do that any sooner, even if that would be nice. Um, but this is now set up that we can plug in numbers, again, keeping track of our signs and trying to be very careful there. So let's see. So I can write this as 1 over Interestingly, we can leave it in centimeters. That will just give us a final result in centimeters. As long as everything's in centimeters, that works. So 1 over negative 46 centimeters minus my DO, 1 over 66 centimeters, all raised to the negative 1. So let's plug and chug away on that. So I'm going to put in my 46 negative and inverse that, and that gives me a negative number, and then I'm going to subtract 66 inverse, so it gets even more negative. And then before anything else, I need to take the inverse once more, and that gives me a negative 27.107. But we're, we're good with two sig figs here. So let's make sure I'm still on the board. Yeah, we still have a touch of room. Negative 27 centimeters d sub i. And the negative sign does matter here, right? That tells us it's a virtual image, that it has formed to the backside of the mirror. So that's really good and pretty consistent. Next, we want to solve for the magnification, which we don't know anything about the heights here, so that's not very useful. But we do know the magnification is also a ratio of negative di over do. So we're going to use that equation because we just solved for di. We already know do. So negative, negative 27 centimeters divided by 66 centimeters. And notice those two negatives are going to cancel and become a positive. So we just have 27 divided by 66, which is 0 0.409. With two sig figs, I'd write that as 0 0.41. And notice the centimeters cancel out, so magnification is a unitless quantity. So that takes us through solving this. As you can see in the slides, they show the exact same result, that they got negative 27 for the image distance and a negative negative 27 over 66, or 0 0.41 for the magnification. So that's an example of applying these equations that's how most of these problems are going to work. The important thing, as mentioned, is keeping track of the signing conventions. And you can write this on your crib sheet. That's totally fair and legit. So F is going to be positive if the problem says it's a concave mirror. If it's a convex mirror, F is negative, and you usually have to fill that in. So make sure to pay attention to that. DO is basically always positive. Uh, we don't really deal with situations where the object's behind the mirror. We could do that with lenses, but basically DO is always positive. It's in front of the mirror. DI is positive if the image is in front of the mirror, if it's a real image, and we, it's negative if it's behind the mirror, which we call a virtual image. And then finally, M is positive for an upright image, which is what we got here. We had a positive magnification, but it's less than one because it's shrunk in size. And it's negative for an inverted image, again, relative to the object, so the opposite sign of the object. So that takes us through chapter 25. We're going to expand these ideas where we'll get to do ray diagrams, use this same mirror equation magnification using lenses in the next chapter when we continue our look at optics. So more to come. I hope you enjoy. Please feel free to ask questions as you have them in the discussion board or shoot me an email. I'm happy to talk things out further. See you later.